All right, I'm recording. So, okay, we had a fantastic leaders retreat. Um, like, incredibly fantastic. Everything was so wonderful. Um, I'm sure you saw pictures if you didn't get to go, and you kind of know it was wonderful. So I won't really go into that a lot. We have, is today the 25th? Yeah. So, in the 27th is the last day for the planner, right? So, we, 6 o'clock on, on the, on what? On 27th. 6, six o'clock on the 27th. He thinks. If, if he's wrong. 27th is right. Is it two? What? Somebody saying no? Somebody said drops of Jupiter. I'll explain to you why I was playing drops of Jupiter in a minute. <laughs> if so, if he's wrong about that time, somebody let me know so I am not recorded saying it wrong and then screw somebody up on there. Okay, I'm gonna go on. Yeah, it's in the email. <laughs> oh, I had to tell you guys why I was playing Drop the Jupiter. So the first time I ever heard that song, I just remember being like, "What is this song about?" Like, I don't know. I mean, I kind of got it, but I thought there's probably more to it. I have no idea. If you listen to it probably about a million times since then, and the reason why, by the way, you'd think if I've listened to it a million times, I probably own the soundtrack or something because, you know, I must like it a lot. But for the six or seven years while I ran my photography business, my main slideshow on my website that frequently got updated, so I'm constantly messing with it, and it's always in the background, the main slideshow was turning to drops of Jupiter. Okay. And that was the very, that was the, it's a great, uh, idea of the image that my photography business happened, had. And to think of it, like, um, I would watch those pictures rotate. I'm just, I'm going to say some things here right, right in a row that I wasn't planning on saying. And as I'm thinking about what I'm about to say, I thought, if y'all don't know me, some people are going to think I'm a little nuts, then more nuts than they already thought I am. But I can remember the first time that I took great pictures, not the first time I took pictures, but the first time that I got home after I had some, I had done it enough. I had taught myself how to take pictures and I had done enough training. And sometimes it's that's just that one thing that's missing when you're taking pictures, like you can take good pictures and then you learn one little thing and everything changes. And the little thing that I learned is how to make the black, the background blurry while the person in the front is in perfect crystal clear focus. And, uh, it, it, you know, the whole, you don't know it maybe if you've never thought of it, but now you'll never be able to unknow what I just told you. One of the hallmarks of great photography is if you're looking at picture, like if you look at two pictures side by side, one taken by someone at the wedding and one taken by the photographer at the wedding. Frequently, the major difference in the two photographs is not the people in it and not where they were standing and maybe not even the type of camera that they were using. Frequently, the difference is this crystal clear focus on the people. In the background, you can see what it is, but you can definitely tell it's the background because it's soft focus. And you would think that there would just be a button on your camera. And maybe today there is for all I know, maybe I know iPhones even do a thing these days that you can put something in the background. It's called depth of field, depth of field, which basically means your field. It's what you're looking at with your, with your eye and how far away from it it is from you is the depth of the field. So if it's way far away from you, that is a deeper depth of field or a more shallow depth of field. And the way that you can make a, a picture look, instead of flat, you can make a picture look like there's dimension in it. You can see that that's for the tree line in the background, or in a church, you can see that the background behind the bride and the groom is actually way far back for behind them is because it'll be softer focus. I remember the first time that I did it and did it well, and I came home and I was lo loading those pictures to that slideshow and I kept getting chills all throughout that song because it was like I had learned something that took me up a notch in the photo in my photography business 
how I ever got hired before I knew how to do that. I don't know. People liked me. It's all I can think. Like I had friends, you know, that's yes. Um, that is another, uh, Christy is calling it Boca or bo some people call it bouquet. It's, um, when you have what usually what Boca is, is like, if you have a string of Christmas lights and up and you're seeing the Christmas lights, you can see, Oh, it's a Christmas light. It's a Christmas light. It looks like an orb. Wait, that further one, it looks like another orb. You know how they, the further they are, or like if you're looking at traffic lights or if you're looking down a street and street lights, the first one, you can tell it's a street light and then it becomes really soft. They become soft and they look like twinkle lights all around. That's what bokeh is. Bokeh, well, however you want to say it. I've heard it. I've heard really educated people say it both ways. <laughs> so I don't know for sure how you're supposed to say it. So anyway, some, yes, some of the new iPhones are able to do it by you press what you're wanting to focus in on the background comes up. Now, the reason I was playing that is because, well, I've, I've always loved the song because it literally was, it embodied my, my photography business. Tonight, right before this call, I was doing a call for another team. Literally, I got off of it and jumped on this one. I didn't even like move, clicked a button and got, came over here. And I had them do that exercise where you close your eyes and I'll have you, I'll have you guys do it later. But basically the exercise goes like this, close your eyes and pretend like money doesn't exist. And, and what, you know, what comes into your mind, what would you do tomorrow if you knew that you didn't have to pay any bills ever again? And every time it never fails. Every time I do that exercise, sometimes different things pop in my mind, but without fail that song for some reason, there's some, there's some mystery, some like artistic beauty in that song. Like there she was in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in her hair. It's like really my possibilities get really big when I hear that song. It's like, you know, galactic possibilities. So anyway, I was still thinking of that. That's why I played it for you guys. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And I, that's another thing he was, I wasn't going to tell that, but I have to tell it. I remember looking it up because I want to see what she looked like. She probably looked like a mermaid. I was just thinking if she had drops of Jupiter in her hair, you imagine what she would look like. And I'm thinking this was some long lost love of his. I mean, and it was about his mom who died. That song, when you think it's a love song, it is, but it's different. I love, I love that about it, but okay. I'm going back to my original. Talked about the planner. I want to planner. I was going to tell you guys this concept that I read earlier this week that I got super excited about it. Um, I was thinking many of you might want to adopt this practice because I don't know how many times we get into the middle of the month and say, how the heck did the middle of the month get here? Especially if it's like, you're thinking, I'd like to rank advance this month. And you're like, how the heck did the middle of the month sneak up on me? So there, uh, some of the really extraordinary, huge teams in Plexus do this thing that I had never heard of until I saw it the other day. And I'm like, I'm going to tell my team about that. And they call it front loading their month, front loading. And the first four days, so the first through the fourth, every day they start 25 conversations. Now it doesn't have to be a plexus conversation, but they use their messenger. The first four days, they start 25 different conversations with random people on their Facebook. So by the fourth, they have a hundred conversations going and you know, 80 of those conversations are going to piddle out. They're not going to continue, but you're going to have 15 or 20 that by the middle of the month, you've had enough of a conversation with that person that you can finally, you're going to have something that gives you a lead to say Plexus about. Somebody's going to tell you something going on in their life. Or if nothing else, at least you have an interesting conversation going on because, hey, uh, let's face it, sometimes it's on the 15th of the month and I got nothing going on. You understand what I'm saying? Like, not even an interesting conversation. <laughs> so they front load their month so that the end of the month doesn't come, come and they're wishing they would have figured out a way to win that planner and they're not even having anybody talking to them. So 25, okay, if you dedicate your first four days to starting, it could be... Okay. If you're thinking, I don't know, it could be, I'm going to literally, I haven't, I, this is not predestined here. I haven't looked this up yet, but I'm going to do this right now. 
I'm going to do my best to do this with not a plexus person. It's going to be difficult in my news feed to find somebody who's not a plexus person. But hang on a second. <laughs> That's going to be the hardest part, actually, because I'm going to be able to come up with the conversation very easily. Okay. Okay, so there's this guy that I friended the other day who is extreme in all the, all the ways. He's extreme about government. He's extreme about vaccines, mostly. And somebody tagged me in something of his that had nothing to do with vaccines, but then I started, like, I friended him. And as extreme as he is, I was like, whoa, this dude is, like, I, I, can't, I can't even give him a run for his money on my wildest day. So if I were going to front load my month, I say, Hey, Chris, out of curiosity, where'd that first article you posted today come from? Or how'd you become so passionate about vaccines in the first place? Is there somewhere you could tag me that see that story? You don't have to type it all out or Hey, Chris, uh, you get a lot of hate mail, <laughs> you know, like, I know people like that. People who are extreme, they like having conversations, I promise you. Okay, that's the first one that I came across. Let me come another one. I got a lot of plexus people in my newsfeed. That's one of the things I need to do is go in and separate my people so I can tell my, I can just push a button and see friends that aren't, aren't plexus friends. Ah. Hey, Robin. That's cool. I saw your daughter won that trophy. She looks just like you when we were growing up. Did you ever think you'd have a kid that looked just like you? Okay. Simple, right? Can you do 25 of those in one day? I can do 25 of those in 25 minutes. Oh, you can't, you can't find 25 people to talk to Misty. What? Okay. Misty's going to send me, she's going to give me her password to her Facebook and I'm going to strike up 25 conversations for her. She won't know what I got her into. I'm going to be like, so, hey, Chris, why are you so extreme? <laughs> I'm going to go up and be like, hey, Brian. <laughs> I see that camper's for sale. I'm interested. <laughs> I'm going to buy her some things, get her into controversial conversation. One thing about it, your, your month would be front-loaded. I'd, I'd get it front-loaded for you. Okay, so I, I need to ask you then. Uh, Okay, you can't think of things to say. They give you the things to talk about. They don't give you the things to talk about. Your friends are not giving you things to talk about. My God, my friends are. If, the, if all these Plexus friends, if all my Plexus friends weren't Plexus friends, and so I would, okay, I can give you Plexus friends. Um, I want, somebody says, I want to upgrade my phone. What do you recommend that is Android based? All right, this is a Plexus friend. If she wasn't, I'd message her and say, how long have you had an Android? <laughs> what made you choose one in the first place? <laughs> it's easy to front load a month. Come on. <laughs> they give you, they're giving you. Okay, here's another one. This is not a Plexus person. Time to settle down. It's getting cold out. Um, it's getting cold out, taking apps ASAP. Cold front is coming. Must be willing to give up a few hoodies. I have no idea what she's talking about. I'd figure out what she's talking about first. Hang on a second. Time to settle down. It's getting cold out. She's got a typo, obviously. Cold front is coming. Must be willing to give up a few hoodies. I might comment on that one. What? Here, let me see if there is a comment. Somebody put nerd alert for on her thing. I have some good food for you to cook and uh, cook up. I just need to get it to you. Okay, so I have no idea what she's talking about. I might comment on that and be like, why do I not know what you're talking about? See if she strikes up a conversation with me and then I can take a private message. This has got to be easy for you. Come on. You, you don't have, I know you don't have a problem. So, okay, is it just me? I do not eat green bell peppers, but I love the orange and yellow ones. Me too, girl. I made a casserole the other day or my mom makes chicken tetrazzini and I won't even eat it. I was thinking about this the other day. My mom makes the meanest chicken tetrazzini you've ever had. 
but I don't like it when she puts the green ones in it. I only like it when it's the orange ones or sometimes the yellow ones. I'll just send you my mom's recipe. You would love her chicken tetrazzini. And there we go. We've started a conversation. I can do this all day. Y'all can do this all day. If you're, if you can't, you're lying to yourself. You know, you can, they give it to you. Literally, this is a topic. The topics are galore. Maybe you're just not a talkative person. Here's a girl who just signed up under me. So Courtney and I leave for market one day. Okay, okay, maybe two. And they send this picture. Family's very first flight without us, turkeys. So she's talking about that they go on a, like a little single engine plane. She went to the market and her family took a flight without her. Okay, so she shows the picture of it. That's so cool. I didn't know you guys were into old planes like that. My very best friend owns one. Theirs is not quite like that, though. I, I can't think of what hers is called. It's like a something. Have you ever seen those old planes that look like a um, like the 1940s, like that the ones that have pinups, pinup girls drawn on them? You know what I'm talking about? And here we go. We're talking about something. I mean, it's easy to start up conversations. You just got to look for it. <coughs> Missy, that's your assignment. You're going to front load <laughs> tomorrow. You're going to front load 25 conversations for me. I want you to screen capture those to me and send them to me. Or here's what you could do. You could screen capture 25 friends on Facebook talking about nonsense. And then I'll send you the things to say to them and see what happens. Instead of getting your password. All right. By the end of the month, the biggest team in Flexus. One of the biggest, I'd say right now, the fastest growing teams in Flexus. This is how they're doing it. Yeah. So by the end of the month, you've got, all, not only do you have conversations going from this month, you probably have some that are still going from last month. Do you have anybody that you talk to or on a regular basis that you talk to them like several times a week or a group chat? If you don't have any group chats, you need to get in some group chats. It will keep your energy. Oh, does some of y'all not like the group chats? Somebody, somebody's wrinkling their nose. I love the group chats because even if I'm not engaging in the group chat, I'm kind of keeping up with people. Three or four of my friends that all went somewhere together and every now and then that group chat will get fired up. But not group text messages, that's different because those will drive you insane. But group chats on Facebook where you add two or three people to a message and invite them to something and the next thing you know, you're talking a year later. Still the same group of women. I love those. It keeps your juices flowing about things to talk about. They'll keep you up on politics and other things you don't care about, but it's fun. Okay. Uh, the, most, the most encouraging thing, oh, somebody says that the group chats make them want to stab somebody. That's good. Okay, and you got the wrong kind of Jeep group chats. You got you to gotta exit those. It's going to say, Amanda left the conversation. That's what it says. And you think, what happened? Amanda must have wanted to stab somebody. Dang it. Amanda. <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> you got to pick people who are, <laughs> you got to pick people who are like-minded to put in your group chat, not people that make you want to stab, stab them. Gosh. Also, probably, you may be in some where they're extraordinarily, uh, you may be in some that are extraordinarily chatty if they chat too much. I don't like those either. You can turn them off, by the way. You can turn a group chat where you don't have to get notified. I do that all the time. So, so I can get my power hour done. Uh, X Factor Kids. Best thing that's happened in a long time, if you don't know. Uh, the statistics for people that, uh, already are buying a, a multivitamin for their children is high. Lots of people. And so now we've got the best one on the market. Um, not only is it extraordinarily clean, um, like all the things, every check mark, every box that you would want check marked. Have you ever seen me promote X Factor Chewables? Raise your hand if you've ever seen me promote it. I never, no, the other one, I'm sorry, the old one. I've never promoted it. I've never put an ad about it. I've never said, hey, we have a vitamin. I've never said, hey, you should use the kids multivitamin ever because it was like other vitamins-ish, a little bit better than other vitamins. And it was hard, it's hard for me. Uh, it's hard for me. This is not hard for me. We have all the things now. It's like non-GMO. It's like Jesus gave us a vitamin. <laughs> 
like literally all the things that you would want in a vitamin to make up for the nutrition that's lacking in our food and it has probiotics. Side note, it's not ProBio5. In case you have kids and you're like, I'm just going to switch out. Well, that's okay if you, that's what you decide you want to do. But if your child has seen improvements because of ProBio5, it's not because of the probiotics in ProBio5. It's because of the antifungal enzymes in ProBio5 for the most part. Most people who have had extraordinary, like, I don't have an inhaler anymore and uh, my kid can poop now and all the things. Um, I mean, all the way down to juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, the big stuff, the big money stuff. Those things, uh, I'm not saying, I don't know anything about this other one. I'm saying I wouldn't risk it for anything to see if you could, you know, save yourself a dollar or something like that and trade them out. I would add this in like, you know, I would add this one in, but I don't want you to get confused that the probiotics in this one are the same as, um, if you were taking probio five, everybody understand that it's different. It, the probiotics might be the same as similar to, I would think the probiotics would be very similar to a children's version of more like a vital biome. Does that make sense? I'm not saying it's exactly the same. Don't quote me on that. But we're looking more, those are going to be more closely compared. Vital biome probiotics, the probiotics and the vitamins um, are going to be a little closer. Probably a children's, more of a child-friendly version of that. Uh, this is going to be my new go-to when somebody tells me my child has this, my child has that, everything that their child has. Now I have a, a go-to. For most people, it's going to be... You, your kid at least needs ProBio5. They probably need ProBio5 and X Factor Chewables. And then if, depending on what their problem is, if they're, you know, how old the child is and what their problem is, Slim and BioCleanse are um, heavy possibilities there too. But lots of times for some reason, not, not with ambassadors as much as it is just with the rest of the universe, it seems that everybody's like, I'm just not real consistent with my kids on that stuff. And so we keep ending up in the emergency room and I'm like, what is, I don't even want to say what's wrong with you, but what's wrong with you? I just keep forgetting at night and then I get a good reminder with a $4,000 bill, you know, like really, you know, like going to the ER, don't, don't do that. So for kids and if you're not consistent on it and you have a kid who's had a health problem, I really, I hope, I hope, hope, hope that um, that you guys will make that like top your priority list. If the kid is old enough, you know, having that out there by their toothbrush so that they'll take the things that they need to take at night, having it out by having their daytime stuff in one corner and their nighttime stuff in a different corner so that they're remembering to take what they're supposed to take. When she started talking, when, when Cindy started talking at Leaders Retreat, talking about our kids and how important our kids are, my kids are old enough that they're taking the adult version of everything. So that's a different thing. Um, but I was thinking about, you know, like I've got a niece, she needs to be on these chewables. I mean, everybody does because we eat peanut butter and jelly guys. I mean, this is, unless, unless you're just an extraordinary stay at home mom, your children are nutrient deficient. I'm just saying like, even if you are extraordinary, the minerals that are in our food these days are just not great. The soil is lacking and the water has pollutants and there's antibiotics and all the things. So, all right. Uh, Lexi has some new stuff that I'm, um, hang on, I'm reading a question. I'll get to your question in just one second. There's a question sent to me privately. Um, Lexi has some new tracks and some new things that are coming up with her. If you like Lexi and you've been using her with some, with a uh, uh, great results so far, then you're going to want to look into those. If you haven't been using Lexi with great results, you probably need to look into her again and give her another try. Um, there's a video um, that Sarah B, Sarah Boyergaard talked about her at, from uh, leaders retreat. I've loaded it to our team page. I think that may have been the one that was too long and I couldn't get loaded, but I will try again. I was afraid my phone was going to go dead while we were at leaders retreat. So, uh, MTHFR, <laughs> that is something, um, I took an ancestry, te uh, test 
a few months ago. I know many of you know that I did that. And when I did, uh, I, I got in a forum because I was interested in some of the stuff I learned from my ancestry and I got in a forum on their site. And in the comments, I saw somebody say about how they took their raw data, data, however you say that word, and they loaded it to, um, I'll have to think of the website. There's a website you can literally click a button in your ancestry file and it'll, it'll download the raw info into your computer. You can take it to another site and you can click a button and load it into that site and it will tell you all the possibilities that you, your future might hold as far as your health goes, like uh, what you're um, prone to. And the first one that I saw was like that I have an MTHFR mutation. I'm like, of course, I mean, people, I think it's, I think it kind of goes hand in hand with autoimmune disorders. I think lots of people who have MTHFR have auto, uh, autoimmune disorders, not always, but I was like, well, of course, um, if you don't know what MTHFR is, just Google it and see if a lot of your, um, Uh, Google it and see if a lot of your um, symptoms of health problems line up with MTHFR gene mutation. I had never gone and had the actual test run. It wasn't until I, that some, um, Christy is saying uh, it's the 23andMe site. There's a different, like if you use Ancestry, which is what I just used because that's what my mom gave me, there is a different site that will, will accept info from both 23andMe and from Ancestry uh, that you can load up, load raw info into and it will give you a whole report I quit reading it because my spiritual beliefs came in and I was like I am not gonna look at all that and let my brain go haywire like I saw the MTHFR was all I needed to see and I was like okay well I needed to know that because you need to know that you don't process uh, fo folic acid the way other people do and that you need to change some things about your diet or whatever and that was good information but the rest of it I was like I don't want to know <laughs> it's like like, like looking into a crystal ball. How am I going to die? You know, I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to claim any of that stuff over myself. And once you see it, it's hard to see it. So I'm not telling anybody that they should do that. Um, but that's that. Um, so I'm going to real quick, I'm going to checklist the things I've talked about in case you didn't write anything down. The planner is the 27th front load your month. Hundred conversations. Um, the new stuff with Lexi, we talked about X Factor Kids. I talked about MTHFR, and I'm going to end this call with something. I'm starting my next breakthrough course on Saturday. For some of you that are on here tonight, I know are taking that course, and I'm excited. I see some of your faces. Um, this is something I'm going to talk about in depth on Saturday. So when you start hearing me talk about it again, don't think I'm just going to repeat myself. But it coincided that this weekend for my breakthrough training is starting on Saturday. And also this weekend, this last weekend, I had multiple people say to me um, at the prayer thing, they would say something to me and I would think, oh, they really need to learn about heart coherence. And I'd say, have you ever watched one of my videos about heart coherence? And then when I went to go look for the videos, I've done lives about it. I've done breakthrough trainings about it. I have done apparently at the end of some of my Zooms, but I've never done a Zoom that was about it because I didn't have any titled it. So I'm gonna teach it real, really quick to you guys. I'm gonna teach it in depth on Saturday for you, those of you who are taking my class, but it's a simple concept. Usually if I go do a speaking engagement somewhere like out of town and I wanna, I wanna like do the, the very last two raw, like I end my speaking engagement talking about heart coherence because it gives them something to go home and think about. When I do a breakthrough training, rather than save it for week six, which it's because it's, wow, this is awesome. Rather, but rather than save it for the end, I lead with it because it changes, changes everything about your life. I want them doing it for six weeks while they're kind of under my wings. I want them to be practicing it and I want to be reminding them every week. Are you doing your heart coherence? What are you learning since you're doing your heart coherence? Has anything changed since you've started your heart coherence? And heart coherence is a weird word if you've never, I, I remember I went to um, Seattle to listen to this guy speak, kind of an out there guy, loved his videos. I'd never heard him speak about heart coherence. And I flew to, Jetty actually 
like I think it was for our anniversary or something. He knew how bad I wanted to hear this man speak in person. And uh, this was like the first and only um, non plexus trip that I've done forever. Like it was not plexus related and I just was really wanting to go. And so we get on a plane, we go, we show up at this place called like spiritual living center or something like that. We go in, he's an author, he's an incredible author. And I'm wanting to listen to, I'm wanting to meet him. I even had qualified, I bought the tickets so I go to the meet and greet at the meet and greet where I have him sign the book. I learn that because I overhear him say, this thing was supposed to be about X, Y, Z. I even saw the hall, the poster in the hallway said I was supposed to talk about X, Y, Z, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Okay. The majority of the people that came to this thing are from Seattle. So they're like, okay, this would be like, if you signed up to listen to me talk about fungus and I said, instead, I'm going to talk about doing your taxes. Okay. I hope you guys are excited. I'm going to but it's a complete change of plans. Like nothing even related to what you think I'm going to talk about. So you can imagine the, it was like a meet and greet the first night. And he did like an hour talking about kind of a general overview of his wisdom. But the next day was all day long about this other thing that I've never heard of heart coherence. And all I could think that night when I went to bed was wasted time, wasted plane trip ticket. Now I'm mad on top of all this, super upset. And, uh, by the end of the following day, I was like, this changed my life. I can't, I mean, like if somebody would have given me the option to say, but sir, would you please do that on the other thing though, that I've watched all your videos about? Like I already knew all that information. I don't know why I wanted him to talk about it. I would have said, yes, that's what I came for. But I left with so much, something so much bigger. So I'm going to explain it to you in the briefest way that I know how, so that you'll I got to give you something to hitch to because if I just teach it to you, you're going to go, I don't know why I just did that. So here's how this works. The human heart <laughs> has the most powerful electric, electric magnetic field of anything in the universe. Nothing has a more powerful magnetic electromagnetic field. And it's from what they can look, if we're looking at like scientific gadgets, it's shaped like it comes, it comes out from you and around. It looks like a big inner tube or a donut wrapped around you. You've probably seen like, um, you've seen a guy standing like this and his arms are out this way. And there's like this energy field all around him. There's a, there are scientific pictures, usually on the front of science textbooks or biology textbooks or whatever. Show a person standing there with anatomy and you see this electromagnetic, like energy coming out of them. Okay. That's the electromagnetic field that comes out of the heart. I want you to imagine so that you can kind of understand where I'm going with this, that that energy that's going out from you, that's magnetic. That's the most important, the magnetic en energy that's going out from you is what is attached to that energy is what you just thought about. Like, if you just thought about how miserable your job is, or if you just thought about how depressed you are, or if you just thought about how anything that you can want to fill the blank in here, that is a victim type thing. That thought goes out there with a magnet on it and it grabs more of that and it pulls it right back to you. More of the same because you got caught in a cycle of not, not learning lessons. Because the lesson of life, in my opinion, I'm, I'm, y'all, I know y'all got on here tonight because y'all wanted to learn the lesson of life from me because I know, right? Love and gratitude. I'm just here to tell you, love other people, be grateful for lessons that you've had, be grateful for growth, personal development, things in your life that have made you better than who you were. But if what you're thinking about is how miserable you are, how you didn't learn anything, like it never even crosses your mind to think about how much you learned because you're still mad about it. If you're thinking about how you can't forgive your neighbor, and when I say neighbor, I mean like maybe literally your neighbor, or you can't, you can't forgive your sister-in-law, then 
life's energy goes back out there and it drags more sister-in-law stuff your way because you never learned. And I'm not saying like, you just never learned. I'm saying you just didn't, you didn't learn. And it's going to give you an opportunity. Again, you can look at it like an opportunity. <laughs> you're like, I'm such a dang victim. And you're like, Oh, it's just going to give you another opportunity. That's all. Life gives you lots and lots of opportunities. Have you ever noticed that once you knock one thing, once you, once your heart lines up with one particular thing, like let's say if you're a person who has always struggled with forgiveness, once you learn forgiveness, the next time it comes at you, it's headed at you. You need somebody you need to forgive. You recognize it. You think, Oh dang, here we go. I got to have to forgive again. Sometimes it's the same person you forgave last time. Sometimes it's the same person every single day. But once you've licked it, at least it, you know what it is when you see it. And you, okay, forgiveness is like the trickiest one in my opinion. There are lots of other things that are not forgiveness. It could be comparison. Let's say you struggle with comparison and you're always looking sideways. And finally you get one just like cut you off at the knees lesson. And it might be like, let's say if you're comparison, I'm just going to use something really, this is like a movie scenario that I'm going to give you. It probably doesn't happen in real life very much, but let's say that you compare yourself with your neighbor or someone that you work with so much that you literally can't, st can't stand to look at her purse because it makes you so like, I just want that purse or her makeup or her size or something about you and you're always comparing, comparing, and you're comparing yourself in the life that you don't have. And oh, sometimes you're comparing the life that you don't have. Sometimes you're like, but she don't have, depends on which side of it you're on. You're like trying to level the playing field in your mind. And you're like, well, one thing about it, at least if she just, if she has that purse, but her husband's wretched, right? None of those, those are not healthy. I mean, we do it, but there's no healthy thoughts. He's like, you make it okay with yourself that she has that great car, purse, body, because you know how wretched something is in her life. And you think, well, that's fair. Yeah, at least it make it fair in your mind. All of that, hang on. All of that is a chance for you to grow grow in grace for you to actually not feel sorry for them in a like turn your nose way at your person who has a wretched marriage. Um, somebody else said wretched at the same time I said wretched. Um, oh, maybe I've been saying wretched this whole time. I have been, <laughs> I just done it on me. But I was like, that's a weird word that we both said in the chat, but I've been saying wretched. So, um, instead of actually looking at their life and feeling this kind of weird pity where you're like, well, you know, at least she has a wretched marriage, that kind of like weird pity that it's not, it's not a true, it's not a true emotion. It's not real. Instead that you have true compassion for the person and what life will do is life will dr pull in more opportunities for you to learn how to have true compassion for a person. Sometimes that looks like your own wretched marriage or sometimes that looks like, I mean, it can be awful. You can have awful complications going on in your life that are mirroring to you. Gratitude, walk in gratitude, walk in love and walk in forgiveness. Sometimes when you can lick one of those things, that thing stands down and you don't have to mess with that one so much anymore. It might come at you to see if you really learned it. But if you're thinking about this, since the heart's magnetic field goes out like this and it comes back in and it's got all these little magnets attached to it. If what you're leading with rather than, uh, comparison, unforgiveness, doubt, shame, guilt, victim mentality. If what you're leading with is gratitude for this most recent season, God, thank you for this season. I mean, it was a hard one. But God, I grew so much. I thank you that you never leave me where I am. I thank you that you are the author of my life and that I never have to worry. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And you're attaching thank yous to your magnets, right? You're attaching gratitude to your magnet. And as it goes out, 
and it's coming back in. It's bringing more things to you for you to practice gratitude. Good things. Now, okay, he had all the science behind it. Like I was blown away by how they can actually detect this on a magnetic, they can see what the magnetic field looks like when you're practicing gratitude. They can see what the magnetic field looks like when you're not practicing gratitude. They can see that it's bringing more of those good things your way when you're practicing gratitude. And if you're not, they can see what it's bringing back to you when you're practicing poor pitiful, comparison, unforgiveness, walking in shame, all the, the negative emotions. So that sounds great, Lori, but I don't know how to stop the cycle. It's a three minute practice called heart coherence and it, you can do it every morning. And once you've done it for a week or so, you think, yeah, I want to do this forever because everything changes when you do. And it goes like this. I'll put a graphic on my pages that tell you the steps so you don't have to write them down or try to remember them. But I always put my fingers like right here because it helps me because we're very, do you notice we're very much about our brains. We think it women, especially not men don't seem to struggle with this as much, but women really, we think and think, and then we'd lay down and we try to go to sleep. And the only way we can finally go to sleep is like sleep comes and takes us away because we're thinking till the last minute usually, aren't we? Well, the brain is your dream killer. Your heart, the spirit inside you is your dream magnet. It's the thing that's your miracle maker. So this, the brain thinking, 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 thinking of things to obsess about, thinking of things to worry about. Did I lay out the thing I need to take to work in the morning? What about the kids? Do I have all the things that is this done? Is that done? And this, and none of that creates anything that except for just negative. It's always fear, doubt, shame, comparison. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Didn't. So if you'll wake up every morning, you'll put your fingers right here and literally your fingers there is all about the touch. Like you're literally going to concentrate on your heart instead of your head. And you're going to try to make your mind go blank. And the first few times you're going to do it, you're going to probably fail at it terribly. But for fir like the first 30 seconds, I just breathe in and out really slow. So do this with me. By the way, I like to do this with really good music. It helps me. Not drops of Jupiter. For me, it's not anyway. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I like this cool music called whole tones, like W-H-O-L-E tones. And I'll turn it on, makes me feel super chill. For like 30 seconds, I'm gonna breathe in real slow and breathe out and I'm gonna let you guys do it. I'm gonna shut up, let the music play and let you guys do it with me for just a second. Now just let an image come into your mind of something that always makes you smile. Picture it very vividly, like right in the middle of your field of your vision. Like I know your eyes are closed, but just picture it very vividly. Now just begin lifting gratitude up for that thing, just in your own way, whatever. You can say it out loud or you can just think it. Oh, thank you for, I mean, for me, I, we had this dog that was the most loyal. He just died recently. But for me, he was the most loyal, precious dog. Always made me smile. Now in this place that we're in right now, I'm just going to begin to pray. What I normally do, if this is just me, 
I begin lifting up gratitude. And then when I get myself completely calmed down, I just begin to lift up positive affirmations. And I'm like, Lord, I thank you that this is going to be a beautiful day. I thank you for my marriage, that it gets stronger every single day. That my husband and I are like, we like iron sharpens iron. That you have such a specific plan for us. God, I thank you for the call on my life. Thank you, I thank you that you never let me get so comfortable that I settle. I thank you that every cell that's go, that, that is in my body is filled with health, light, wholeness. God, I thank you that, that my imagination, when I think about what my dreams are, that I can get such a crystal clear, like, if money didn't matter, this would be my dream. And you give me just a crystal clear, like a seed, an image. And then literally, I, at this point, I just meditate on it. Now, this by this, uh, in a regular day, I'm still praying, but in a regular day, your three minutes would be done and you'd be out the door. I'm going to keep praying for us, though. Holy Spirit, we just invite you in into our imaginations. I thank you for this vehicle that you've given us, this plexus vehicle, that can free up our time, that can free up our money, where we don't have to be a boss. We don't have to be bossed by a schedule that we can dream like someone whose bills are paid. As I thank God every day, I say, God, I thank you that my bills are paid so that I can live my true heart's desire instead of living someone else's dream for them 40 hours a week. I thank you for Plexus Freedom. I'm, sometimes I'll just pray over the whole company. Lord, bless that company. Lord, anoint the company, anoint the people at the, in the offices, anoint the people, anoint the hands that touch our products. God, thank you that I can think bigger than just myself now. Thank you that I'm not, I don't feel that I walk around um, bogged down in my mind anymore. I can, I can let my heartstrings pull me now. I can let... something bigger than me. I can be part of something that's bigger than me. I thank you for your healing power. I thank you that you're breaking the negative stuff off of me every day. Anything negative that doesn't belong, Lord, that you're just breaking it off of me. It's just falling to the ground. I release those things to you, Lord. I let go of those things. I choose. I choose to walk in forgiveness. I choose to forgive and I choose to look from a different perspective at things that I used to, uh, that used to offend me. God's really been talking to me about being offended. God, I thank you that you never leave me the same. That you're always working on me. Thank you that I was called, born with a purpose, a seed in my heart of just a purpose and that you are the one that waters it. Thank you that your intentions are always for me, never against me. I thank you for my family. I'm giving you guys an example. You can be just saying this with me. I mean, I'm praying right now like I pray, like I'll be praying tonight when I go to bed. Yes, Lord, yes. God, I give you my yes. I choose to walk in the yes of my life. I choose to walk in the spirit, Lord. I choose to walk in supernatural gifts. Whatever your gifting is for me, Lord, I accept it tonight. I open my hands, like I put my hands out in front of me and I open them and I say, I'm here to receive, Lord. I'm here to receive your goodness. I'm here to receive the blessing flow that's coming to me tonight. I'm here to be anointed by your, your spirit. God, come in and clean out every part of my heart. Bleach even, like even that dark corner of my heart that I don't want to let anybody into that one place that's too sensitive, that makes me feel too vulnerable, Lord. Even come in and push that door open and just bleach it. Lord, don't leave me the same. 
I thank you that you never forget us. Thank you that you know the details about us. Thank you that you know every detail of my life. Thank you that you microchip me with the Holy Spirit and that I walk in power. I walk in glory. I walk in healing. I walk in miracles. I have a calling for miracles on my life that I lay hands on people and the, the sick get well. That the sick at heart, emotionally sick, the heartbroken, they see the true nature of who you are, Lord. When they see me, they see love, they see grace. And when I look at someone with judgment, Lord, that you correct me, don't let me judge. You remind me how much you love that person. You created them with a, with a passion and a purpose too. God, give me a new song in my life. Give me a new soundtrack that I like I walk to every day. A song in my heart that I can wake up every morning and I have a like new beat to my step. And that I look up 30 minutes later and I think I've just done 30 minutes of gratitude while I drove to work. I'm changing my heart's magnetic power, the power electromagnetic field of my heart. I'm changing it. Lord, because I'm leading with gratitude in everything that I do. And I'm learning to walk in your ways in everything that I do. I lift this all up in the name of Jesus. Amen. <coughs> I know I have to, I need to go back and read a couple of comments from earlier. Oh. More than a couple. Hang on a minute. I'll get to the one about the C-section in a second. Just a second. I just want to blow kisses. I'm reading some of these sweet messages. <clears throat> I don't even, I can't see if she's on here still. Yeah, she is. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back up to one. Someone asked me, I've been seeing the post about who are all my C-section babies or had babies that way or whatever. What's the best way to reply? Is there a link or a short engaging way to in interest them in the messages being sent? I've seen it. A lot too. I don't know what everyone's saying. Uh, that's part, been part of my wheelhouse for a long time. So I have tons of information inside my head about it. Um, there may be a short article that people, do you guys know? Does anybody know what, is anybody, do y'all know what post I'm talking about that you see everybody posting? Okay. Um, I'll explain very briefly what it's about. Like I can explain that in one minute talking about the ba babies that are born via cesarean uh, don't get the privilege or the bonus um, that is of, of coming from a vaginal birth because the um, microbiome that comes from the mother that teaches the baby's immune system what to react to, what to respond to, and it actually literally um, plants seeds in their, um, in their colon to begin their own microflora that makes their immune system. Now, with lots of, um, here's probably what I would say to people. Did you know that they're actually now doing a thing? You might wanna look up the actual term for it so you don't have to use this word unless you have to, but it's like vaginal swabbing, have you seen this? Like before a baby's born, like a cesarean baby, for an hour, they'll put something, sorry men, earmuffs, something similar to a tampon, <laughs> something that's more like a, uh, something that can spread out. I would say maybe like compact rag, something like this. They insert that an hour before the baby's born and let it soak in some of the microbiome when the baby's born via C-section. 
they use that towel all over the baby to give them some of that microbiome. So that's a great way that they're trying to compensate for the baby not being born vaginally. Um, there may, I actually saw somebody post it today and at the bottom of their post, like, or maybe in the comments, they posted a, a, an article, maybe it was Kelly. Somebody put like an article or a link to an article. I don't know. Anyway, the microbiome, the, the advantage a baby has that is born cesarean can, uh, uh or that is born natural versus cesarean. Um, the best chance they have at having a healthy gut normally is going to come from something like, you know, a probiotic, like it's going to be in our new uh, vitamin or for many of them, many of the cesarean babies are the ones who struggle with autoimmune disorders later in life because of the fact that their immune systems compromise right off the bat. Nursing is another way. We don't know these things until we know them. So I don't, I mean, my babies were born cesarean. So if I could do it again, I still wouldn't have my, my son. There's no way. Like they, they did all the measuring and I'm like, no, my body won't do that. He was 10, he was 10 pounds when he was born. He was nine pounds, 15 and three quarters ounces. First baby. And that wasn't happening. And his head now, I mean, his head from the size he was like two or three years old, he could wear a man's hat. So that ain't happening. Right? No, no way. <laughs> like some form of torture. So um, child, as if childbirth is not bad enough with like a five pounder, right? So anyway, you can only do what you can do. And at, at the point of where their children have been given antibiotics, um, that's another knock against their immune system. And so that's the great thing about what we have now. There's lots of new message. Okay. My heart is a magnet for miracles. My, I have this picture that is my, um, it's almost always my cover photo. I think it still is. It's a photograph that I took when I was doing photography and I won a worldwide photography contest with it. I got way better after I won that because they sent me to, uh, they sent me to New York to learn from five famous photographers because I won that contest. But this is the picture of my daughter. It says a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. That's the picture that won the contest. And I think it just matches that quote of mine there. So I have that printed out. It's on my mirror, you know, like <laughs> a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. I'm reading real quick. I'm, I'm almost to the end of these messages. Okay. Carla said she posted it with an article in the comments. So is it a good, do you know what the website was or anything, Carla? Oh, Katie's giving us a, a, You guys need to copy and paste what Katie wrote in the in the um, comments over here. Watermelon head, yes. My husband too. My husband tries to wear, sometimes he'll put on something similar to a cowboy hat or something and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that was not made for you. Your head is too big of a melon. He's just got too much going on up underneath that hat. It's like, no, it looks really funny on you. <laughs> My sister, my brother weighed 10 pounds and 12 ounces. My sister weighed 10 pounds and 13 ounces. So when I was about five months pregnant and people were like, when are you due with trip about five months pregnant and people thought I was due. That's because he was about half the size he was going to be. And that's because, uh, uh, he was already size of lots of babies. <laughs> His big old boy. Turn that down. Then Malia was born. She's like seven thirteen, I think, which is normal. But I remember thinking she was tiny, so tiny, because I'd never been around little babies that were normal size. 
my brother, my sister, when they were born, they were huge, like toddlers when they came out walking, basically. <laughs> my son, I remember my son was like, big old boy. <laughs> He's a big kid now, though. He's like six foot three. Probably going to get taller than that. Okay. Any other questions tonight? Those of you who have something, some of you have said something about my breakthrough class. It starts Saturday. If anybody wants the link to, um, to get an, a registry for that message me later, uh, on Facebook and I'll, I'll send you the link to get a ticket for that. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Misty. Was he a big baby too? Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. She's. 813. Wow. Yeah. That's what I weighed when I was born. Mama and they thought I was a big baby till my brother was two pounds bigger than that. <laughs> and then my sister was even, you know, saying, you know, was that I was 812 and my brother was 1012 right after me. God. Big babies. Okay. I'm closing. I'm going to turn off the recording.